Hey, what's going on? It's Justin Dickmeyer from engineeringtrainingexam.com. And in this video, we will discuss future worth. In this video, we will define the topic of future worth, walk through the general workflow of solving such problems, and jump into working an example of something we may see on the exam. The topic of future worth falls under the main category of engineering economics. Equations, symbols, tables, and information on the various topics covered in engineering economics can be referenced on pages 114 through 120 of the NCEES Supplied Reference Handbook, 8th edition, 2nd revision. It has been established in previous videos that money does not have the same value at different points in time. For this reason, we need tools, tables, formulas, and various economic factors to reference when it is necessary to compare two complex alternatives. Future value analysis evaluates a project or investment based upon the basis of various costs and benefits that will be accumulated at some future point in time, which is exactly the opposite of what we do in present worth analysis. When we have a number of various receipts and disbursements strung across a period of time, we are able to convert them all, regardless of when they take place in time, into one unique equivalent future value. As mentioned, this is a useful analysis to employ when comparing various investment alternatives, when the future benefits of all those alternatives and other factors are known. So let's run through the general workflow. The goal of a future worth problem is to convert a series of costs and benefits over a period of time into one equivalent future time value. We may be given a problem that requests that we convert just one series of transactions, or we may be given a problem where we are asked to compare two unique investments or projects, each with individual periods, interest rates, and transactions. The general workflow is the same regardless of whether it is a single or a multiple alternative problem. The steps are as follows. Number one, define the various benefits and costs identified for the alternative and the period of the entire investment. Number two, determine the interest rate. Number three, using the future worth formulas in the table on page 114, as well as the compound interest table starting on page 116, of the NCEES Supplied Reference Handbook, convert the benefits and costs into a future value. And number four, regardless of what we are analyzing, we are typically looking for our benefits to be maximized over the period of the investment. So let's look at an example. An engineering firm is looking to purchase a new machine to manufacture one of their products. The machine has the following economic characteristics. The machine, which we'll call A, has an initial cost of $45,000. It has an annual maintenance cost per year of $12,000. It has a salvage value of $10,000. And it has a lifespan of six years. Assuming 12% interest, what is the future worth of this particular machine? So here's the solution. The goal is to determine what the future worth would be of the machine if the firm decided to purchase it now. It is typical that there would be two alternatives compared in this type of analysis. But to stay focused primarily on the process, we will analyze just one machine at this time. We can complete this analysis by using the functional notation version of the future worth formulas found in the table on page 114 
and referencing the compound interest table starting on page 116 of the NCES Supplied Reference Handbook. As engineering economic problems get more complicated, it is best to get comfortable using the functional notation version of the equations and referencing the compound interest tables as it will lead to a much more efficient use of your time. When comparing options, it is best to illustrate them separately and compare them at the end before concluding anything. But since we are only dealing with one machine in this situation, let's just run through the general analysis. We are given the following information. An initial cost of $45,000, a salvage value of $10,000, maintenance costs of $12,000 annually, a lifespan of six years, and an interest rate of 12%. Along with the salvage value of this machine that occurs at year six, which is already a future value, we will use the single payment compound amount formula written in functional notation, which is F is equal to P times F over P I N for the cost of the initial purchase. For the annual maintenance cost, we will use the uniform series compound amount formula written in functional notation for future worth, which is F is equal to A times F over A I N. And like before, the term F over P I N and F over A I N can be defined using the given values of the interest and the period and the compound interest table starting on page 116 of the NCEES Supplied Reference Handbook. So the total future worth of all future receipts and disbursements of this particular machine over the six-year period will be F, which is our future worth, is equal to negative F plus P times F over P I N plus A times F over A I N. Referencing the compound interest table for 12% on page 120 of the NCEES Supplied Reference Handbook, we can reference the appropriate values for the period, left column, and work our way horizontally and find that F over P, 12% 6, is equal to 1.9738, and F over A, 12% 6, is equal to 8.1152. Plugging these values into the equations, we get F is equal to negative 10,000 plus 45,000 times 1.9738 plus 12,000 times 8.1152, which is equal to $176,203. The future worth of this machine would be $176,203. This value is usually compared to another alternative that will give us the value that is higher or lower. In this case, if we had two machines, each that could provide the same quality of product, we would look to purchase the one with the lower future worth, which would mean the firm has to invest less money into it. Now there are a number of ways that we would fail in our analysis while working these types of problems. One way is to overlook the salvage value as money coming back to the firm at the end of the machine's lifespan. This could make or break a comparative analysis, so it's important to ensure that all values are accounted for. Also, Sometimes two alternatives are compared that have different lifespans. If this occurs and no analysis period is defined, we choose the least common denominator of the two lifespans to ensure we are comparing equivalent values based off the same period of time. If this type of analysis is needed, the various costs and benefits must be accounted for in each of the added periods. For example, if machine A has a lifespan of three years and machine B has a lifespan of six years, 
then we will have to account for the economic factors of machine A twice. So if the salvage value of machine A is $3,000 at the end of three years, then this same salvage value will also occur at the end of year six. Well, that's it for this video. Do you know anybody that would benefit from this lesson? If so, let's try to reach out and help others by sharing this video with them. Also, take a second to like this video and leave a comment and tell me how it will help you move forward in your goal of becoming a professional engineer. And finally, type in engineerintrainingexam.com into your URL bar and visit the site to download for free the transcript to this video along with the example problem and solution we worked. While you are there, you can also sign up for the free EIT Academy Bootcamp, 137 pages and over 50 practice problems and solutions to get you on track to passing this exam.